Well, hello, hello, good evening. Joel and Sherilyn here, guys. Nice to be on with you tonight. Mm -hmm. uh, we're looking forward to this conversation because this is um, another important topic that is so important for us to understand and live. Mm -hmm. um, anything you want to share with the, with the people? Well, um, if you are on at this time, um, we're coming on a little later. Um, however, it's always great to be able to come and share with you, um, you know, tips and instructions that uh, what we were able to use use to be able to um, to be successful in our marriage. And so we're we're we we are just grateful for God's way of guiding us and teaching us and showing us um, that you know what He didn't send us here without instructions. And so we want to share with you what many has been using and, and found out and also what we've experienced and know to be very beneficial in families, in couples as they build stronger and healthier marriages. So Tonight, I am dancing right now as Joel is sharing to all our platform. If you're on here and you would like to go ahead and help us out by sharing it on your platform, that would be helpful. But I would love to more uh, know where you guys are, are tuning in from if you are on tonight. How are you guys? How was your week? Um, how was your weekend? Any exciting stuff that's going on? Any anniversaries? Any birthdays? All right, so um, let us know where you're coming in from and share with a friend like Sherilyn mentioned. But tonight we're going to be talking about his needs and her needs. And um, this is important to understand because um, at the end of the day, um, relationships, especially the marriage relationship, mm -hmm. in that relationship, um, legally, the only mm -hmm. person that is legally able to meet the need of um, a husband is his wife, mm -hmm. and the only person that is legally um, able to meet the wife's need is the husband. And so a couple of things to understand is that the first thing we need to do is have knowledge mm -hmm. of what those needs are. Mm -hmm. um, you can't do something you don't understand or you don't know what it is, and then um, once you understand it, um, then you go ahead and you do, mm -hmm. right? And so tonight we want to talk about what those needs are, mm -hmm. and then we're going to give some tips and insight on um, how you go about meeting those needs and how important they are and what are some of the consequences that comes mm -hmm. um, with not meeting them mm -hmm. and how um, the, there could be a whole lot of backlash yeah. um, in so many different ways yeah. um, from not being in the mentality or habit mm -hmm. of um, serving each other and meeting each other's needs. Yeah. Um, I'm sorry, you wanted to say something? No, yeah. I like to liken, I like to liken this whole process of meeting each other's needs by viewing a couple as uh, two servants that sh in love with one another. Right. Um, that's the, that's the mentality that it takes to meet each other's needs. It takes the mentality of two people that are servant mindset people. Mm -hmm. um, unfortunately, we live in a world of selfishness. We live in a world where, um, you know, we tend to just think about ourselves. As a matter of fact, many of us uh, get married mm -hmm. thinking about ourselves. Right. And so we're more thinking, you know, I'm getting married because I see how this other person mm -hmm. is good for me, right. not how I'm good f for them. Right. And to be honest with you, um, marriage works best if we got married because we recognize how good we are for the other person right. and that we're going to partner with God to help God to bring out the best in that other person and that we're more committed to that mission than the mission of um, self-gratification self and taking care of us. So... Tonight, we're going to get into it, and I hope that uh, you're excited and ready for this conversation because it's so, so important. Right. Anything you want to share before it's, we it's jump in? It's very important that we do understand and we do get it, like um, the fact that we are um, in our marriages to meet the other person's need. Uh, we cannot meet our own needs. The way God designed it is for us to be uh, givers, right? 
and um, everything that I look at it as everything that Joel need was packaged inside of me. Everything that I need was packaged in Joel mm -hmm. for him, for us to be able to be selfless. You know, if you're a believer, you know that Christ, um, the relationship between Christ and the church is likened to a like a marital relationship. We, the church, is the bride and Christ is the bridegroom. What did Christ do for us? First, we, without knowing that we needed a savior, Christ knew. So Christ died for us. So he gave himself for us. He knew that is a need that he needed to fill inside of us right? We needed to be in right standing with the Father so, so that we'd be able to have life and have it more abundantly. So he died for us. And then what he asked in return is for us to make him Lord, you know, truly love him and give him rule, reign, dominion over our life and live for him. And he also, in, in scripture all the time, he says, if to, if to be able to look like him, we are to be servants, givers, servers. You know, he who wants to be, be first must be last. And, you know, he, this teaching uh, about us always having a humble place. You know, be in that place of humility and servanthood to one another. You know, the thing, the very thing that we want to have for our, ourselves, we must must first meet it in another person, as Christ would 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 um would train and teach us. So it's the same thing in our marriages. When we get into marriage, we're 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 come packaged with our gifts and talents and and all the different things that we bring to the marriage, so that both parties could be catapulted to where God called them to be. Right. And so here it is. We come together in a marriage, but there's needs that need to be met and it only could be met by the other person. How wonderful God is so that we can be selfless and not selfish. Amen. And so we're going to dive right into some of these needs uh, tonight. And I want to start with um, hmm, I'll start with his needs. Okay. All right. The number one need for a man is for honor and respect. Honor and respect is his number one need, and God designed him this way. Um, as a matter of fact, um, Scripture tells us um, for wives to to um, to honor their uh, their own husbands, right? And that Scripture is very specific. It didn't just say honor your, honor husbands, but honor your own husbands because. Wives are designed and have the ability to honor very well um, when they respect a, a man. Um, but God was very specific by saying, honor your own husband. And the reason why he says your own husband is because women are attracted to, to leadership in, 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 in a man. Mm -hmm. And a lot of times if a man is not in his rightful place in terms of his ability to take care of his family. Um, I'll give you an example so I don't beat around the bush. <laughs> Your husband is still drinking. He's still, you know, not uh, fully... He's not the priest of the home. The he's not praying. The home. He's not doing... He, you know, he, he, didn't, he didn't come around. in Bible studies. <laughs> he didn't come around yet. Yeah. And because he didn't come around yet, and you guys are part of a church, and he goes to church on Sundays or whatever, or maybe he doesn't even come to church. But the pastor, of course, he got his act together because he's a leader. Women tend to show honor to the pastor while at the same time dishonoring their husband because he's not as mature as pastor, right? Remember, Scripture didn't say honor your own husband, or it didn't say honor your husband if he's mature in the things of God. It didn't say honor your husband if he's a believer. It didn't say mm -hmm. honor your husband if he reads the Bible and pray with the family. Mm -hmm. It says honor your own husband. And so the fact that you didn't marry him, regardless of his behavior, regardless of where he is in his maturity right now, God is commanding that he is honored um, and you, we, we, we have to understand how important that is because he will rise to the ability of, to, to, the, to the level of your honor. Mm -hmm. All right. He will rise to the level of your honor. And the last thing he responds to is your dishonor mm -hmm. because honor and respect for him is a need, just like gasoline is a need for a car. It's not a suggestion. It's a need. And if it runs out of gasoline, it's not going to function. And so honoring him, honoring your own husband 
is critical for him in honor in order for him to rise to the occasion um, that he's called to so uh, what are the things that happens to a husband if he don't feel like he's being honored or he's not being honored and is there a specific way he's being honored could there be a disconnect in that the your wife might be thinking that she is indeed i honor and respect my husband but he doesn't mm -hmm. see it yeah a lot of times um women may honor their husbands in a way that um that they receive love uh, for example a lot of uh women may be women that um their love language is like acts of service mm -hmm. and so because they pack his lunch and they take care of his children and his laundry is done his shirt is pressed um, and those type of things that that's important to them that make them feel good about doing their duty as a wife um, because they do those things they think that in the in the act of doing that to make sure that everything is fine around the house they feel like that's me honoring him right mm -hmm. and i'm not saying all women act uh behave this way but mm -hmm. a lot of women um do that like this is how i show my family that i care and i honor them or my husband and so yeah i honor him what is what what, what do you mean i don't honor him mm -hmm. but at the same time she's talking about how great pastor is or how great some other leader is while at the same time telling him he need to be like them and that type of stuff so verbally you may not be uh, honoring him but you honor him in your action and you think that is enough but um it's not to him you see men men function on affirmation a whole lot Mm -hmm. um, affirmation to a man, like verbal affirmation, especially in front of other people, right? It's like an ego thing. God knows that he designed a man with a, a bit of an ego. So honor is so important for him to fuel him that God tells us in the scriptures to make sure that he is indeed honored. And so um, it's not what you're doing only, but a huge part of his honor comes from what you're saying to him how do you speak to him right um do you speak with a tone that makes him feel like um like he messed up all of the time mm -hmm. or that he's inadequate when you're speaking to him what's that tone sound like what is your eye saying right are you rolling your eye right what are the non-verbal things that he's looking at in your body language saying to him are they saying that I respect you, I honor you, or are they saying that you're a piece of garbage mm -hmm. um, and, and I'm, I'm, I'm giving you, um, you know, I'm just letting, digging in on you now to let you know that, you know what, um, I don't approve of who you are, all right? So there's a lot of different things that can be done um, that says to a man that he's not being honored and, and respected, not just I, I hate you, the actual words, but nonverbal communication, mm. right? Um, says that uh, also. So Even, how, how, can, how can that affect a man? How can, can we tell when a man is feeling dishonored or disrespected? He, he, most men are not gonna be drawn towards you when they feel dishonored and disrespected. Their, their heart begins to turn away, right? Their heart begins to turn away and you could tell um, that he's beginning to tune out. Um, a lot of men begin to run towards things like their man cave. Mm. They run towards their hobbies, um, like fishing, uh, whatever it is that they like. They begin to move towards their hobbies and other things because what they're trying to do is they're trying to get into this survival mode to make themselves energized to go again for the week. Mm. Um, a lot of times we don't realize that that's what's going on, but that's what's happening, right? Even, um, even the man himself may not realize that that's what he's doing, but he's grasping for whatever he can get to give him the energy necessary to go and face the world again um, another week. So if he's a respectful person and he doesn't lash back or he doesn't complain, and make it known that I'm feeling hurt and I'm feeling dishonored, dishonored, which 90 something percent of men won't tell you, honey, I'm feeling hurt and I'm feeling dishonored. They're just going to begin to respond um, to that dishonor in a way that says that I'm pulling away, I'm turning my heart. 
there's something else that's gonna charge me up. And so men normally do things like get into hobbies. They normally get into whatever they're into. If they're into their car, they're gonna invest in that. If they're into their boat, they're gonna invest in that. Um, whatever they're into, they're going to begin to invest in that because that, that now is their new lifeline for a source of energy. I find that men shut down um, because um, I see it a lot in relationships mm -hmm. and also in our relationships shutting down or lashing out. Um, you know, and when, when, whenever they're asked to do something, if a wife asks, like when I ask you to do something, you would just you just won't do it because you were being a little passive aggressive, mm -hmm. <laughs> you know, like I'm not going to do that because I don't feel like doing that mm -hmm. because I feel like I'm being controlled or I'm feeling like, you know, you don't, you don't respect me. So I'm, I, I don't feel like doing that. So I'm not going to do it. So it's, I feel like it's less, there less productivity. Remember mm -hmm. we got into our relationship for, for synergy, for us to get together, to move for, forward together. We were supposed to be accomplishing more. And if we don't understand the, the, the needs in our spouse, and if we're not filling those mm -hmm. needs in the spouse, what we're doing is actually ripping, you know, tearing down our own success. So it's very important for us to know the needs and work diligently to make sure that the need is fit, is met in our spouse. Because again, remember that they can't meet their own need, just like we can't meet our own need. And so we need each other to do our jobs. Yeah, you know, we always tell this story when we talk about this topic, about the um, the banquet table, right? It's, um, it's, a, it's a, light, a cute little story, a very unrealistic story, but, but nevertheless, it gets the message across. It's like being at a banquet table where we have two uh, people that are uh, dishing out food and they have these long um, forks or spoons attached to their hands, right? The spoon is long enough to reach anything on the table that is needed for both parties to eat, but the spoon is lo uh, too long to bring back to their own mouth to feed themselves. So in order for both of them to eat, they have to ask the other person to dip something and and feed the, the person across the table from them. And so no one at this table is going to get fed if they don't cooperate, number one. If they don't co communicate and if they don't cooperate, they're not going to be fed um, because every because the, 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 the man needs the wife to feed him and the wife needs the man to feed him. And so this is what um, this is what taking care of that need of honor and respect is to this man. Um, he can't give it to himself and he's depending on his wife to affirm him in this area. And that's so, so important um, to understand. Well, the number one need for a man is, is respect. Well, the number one need for every woman, um, wife is security. Mm -hmm. And um, a lot of the times, um, this can be this can be a challenge for most men however women just like how men and the men need security i mean respect in order to function a woman needs security in order to function 100 percent because she's a delicate she's she's delicate um the bible referred to to a woman as a delicate vessel in first peter 3 and 7 i'm going to go to there now so for first peter 3 and 7 it says Likewise, husbands, likewise, dwell with them with mm -hmm. understanding, giving honor to the wife as to the weaker vessel, yep. and as being heirs together of grace of life, that your prayers may not be hindered. So here it is. The, remember the Bible says um, that he who finds a wife um, finds a good thing and mm -hmm. obtains favor from the Lord, right? So your wife is actually a, um, your, your blessing uh, for favor. So if you have a wife, you could actually go to the Lord and you get favor for promotion, favor for advancement, for favor for financial increase when you have a good wife, right? However, it's important to know how to treat her. And her number one need is security because she needs to feel um, safe. Um, oh, how, some, some, um, how can she feel safe? Well, 
making sure that you're communicating to her the 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 goals you know um, proper communication is very important um some women uh they the, how you speak to her you know uh women don't respond to i know now the in this culture today the way uh couples speak to them uh, to each other and it could be for um, respect as well we notice that couples would speak to them to each other in a very disrespectful way using um profanity um, joking, being sarcastic, sarcasm, yeah. um, all these different things. These are sarcasm means ripping of the flesh. It's a ripping away. And so when we're being sarcastic to one another, we're actually damaging one another. And remember that death and life is in the power of the tongue. So when we're speaking to one another, we, we are either it's coded. We need to code it for in respect for men and security for women. So if you're speaking to your wife and you're telling the girl, What's one, you know, did you gain weight? You know, um, uh, what, what happened, what happened to your hair? You know, could you, could you take out the food faster? You know, if you're being sarcastic about something that she's working hard with, hard, hard, um, hard on, well, guess what? It's not, she might laugh or you guys might laugh or she might rebuttal, but over time, because women are incubators, she's going to incubate that, inf that information and it's going to, the enemy is going to be able to use that information to build, break down her self image, to bring up something inside of her that is not you know, wasn't there before. So the wife that you may have been, been joking with for uh, five years on the sixth year is a different person right. because of so much negative that, uh, that was sown into her, she's going to give birth back to it. I can't um, stress how much uh, important for us to understand that women are incubators. You know, that she never gives back exactly what you give her. When it goes into her, whether it be a, uh, a sperm, when you give a woman a sperm, she gives you a baby. You give her um, some... Um, uh, groceries, she give you a meal. You give her a house, she makes a home. You know, she always creates because that's how God makes her to to be able to incubate and create an atmosphere for growth. Uh, and so, whenever words come into her, those words are turn into some, if it's positive words, it's amplified. So that's, that's good for you as a husband. If you're constantly put, um, praising her or giving her affirmation and appreciating her and, and you know, adding value, also pro providing, um, leadership, uh, in that you're speaking, like you constantly communicate with her what's going on. She's included. She's the first person you reach out to, to talk about ideas and so on. You respect her opinion. You know, um, you, you, you're thinking about doing something instead of calling a, a mother, a father, or, or a friend, you call her right first to find out what is her um inside so she's feeling secure because you're creating security in everything she feels a part that is a partnership and that she's valued and so sometimes men are not talkative enough that they stay silent they just figure that they do everything in their head and she should get it i already told you i love you once and that love i told you at, at the wedding or before <laughs> before we got i told you i love you and that's that's what the, i told you i love you at engagement and i told you i love you at the, the wedding but that's enough you should know that i love you but you know she needs to be assured and calm she needs to be affirmed or reminded of the value that she is and that she is love and not only in um words but when you go out and and um, find out what her love language is because it's a great book um I can't remember, um, Gary Chapman that talks um, about the five love languages and when you go and make sure that you know you, you're actually doing that research or let's read this book together or you went and read read that book so that you get could get insight to know what her love language is again you're fulfilling the second um, law in marriage which is the law of pursuit and when she sees all of this being done guess what she's feeling secure you're creating that security and in, inside of her that you know what this is a place where she she can flourish this marriage she can flourish she will give she'll be able to you know serve and also when a person feels love and secure it's easy for correction and that person receive complaints very good meaning what do i mean by that so if she's doing if your wife is doing something that um you know you you don't agree with it's easy to bring it up to her 
or if she did something dishonoring to you, it's easy to bring it up, bring it up to her because when you speak to her, well, you did X, Y, and Z, be, she'll receive it differently because she's going to know, oh my gosh, I hurt my friend. And she'd be apologetic because you've created a security in such a way that she knows that you, you have her best interest at heart and you won't just tell her this and she, she's going to more want to work mm -hmm. to be better for you. So security encompasses so much for a woman and for you. And a lot of men don't really realize when they create security um, for their for their for their wife it um, it makes life life sweeter for them in other areas if you know what I mean you know it makes it so much sweeter for, for them and um, and that's and vice versa when we are on when a when a man feel on honor he do anything for his wife you know anything is like he feel like he's a uh, tarzan <laughs> you know he could do anything for her and she will feel and um, the same thing you know if she when she feels secure she knows that no one could rock their home and she'll do anything for the home and for for the house so you know it's very important for us to make sure that we understand each other needs so the number one need for a husband is respect and number one need for a wife is security and everything we do in our conversation in our communication should be coded in our spouse's number one need when we're when we when we're um, talking when we're doing anything we should have in the back of our mind am i doing this is what i'm doing or saying coded with their number one need absolutely and that's smart right there um to, to for that sherilyn just mentioned is are our behaviors and our um words coded right with filling their number one need so sherlyn mentioned number one for our um, men is honor number one for women is security well the number two need for men is sex right number two need for men is sex and once again we're talking about a need and not a want so a man was designed to procreate um, at the end of the day um, god designed him to carry the seed right for the generation right the purpose is greater than even the pleasure that he gets when he does have sex but because of the purpose that god um created this need for right because of the end game of procreating it's going to be a need right and so within uh, god's purpose this this design is actually meeting a need for the man and that's something that um, his wife has to understand that this is now a need and this is not something that you want to tamper with it's not something that you want to use as a weapon against him right because now you're opening him to uh, you're opening up him to the enemy by utilizing this area of his life which is a need to just get at him mm -hmm. right so you guys having argument you guys have a disagreement on something and then you decide, well, you know what, I'm going to withhold sex from him um, as a form of punishment until he gets um, the message or until he does what I want him to do. So in essence, you don't want to manipulate a man um, with sex. You don't want to withhold sex as a form of punishment. Um, as a matter of fact, sex is actually uh, good for you guys, especially when you're trying to recover from something. Um, because of the fact that a covenant is being strengthened every time you guys have sex, right? Um, you know what? I I love the fact that that has never been an issue with Sherilyn and I, where as much as we had our issues along the way, um, sex was not used as a weapon against me. And it was, uh, I'm sorry, withholding sex was not used as a weapon against me. Um, as a matter of fact, it was always a beautiful thing that brought us together and strengthened our connection at all times and um, we knew that that was a good thing for us that we strengthened our connection especially in difficult times so sex is a need and not a want i don't know if there's anything else i could say mm -hmm. about that specific need as much as we as much as we men um would agree that this is important I don't know why I don't have a whole lot of words for it today <laughs> or a whole lot to say about it today. But you guys already know um, how important sex is to a guy, 
right? But I, I guess the deepest or the greatest thing I want you to understand, ladies, is that this is not something that he's coming up with. This is something that God ingrained in his design, right? And that because it's in his design, um, it's, it's beneficial to the relationship that that need be met. Um, and I know uh, men, you can also have um, compassion for your wife if, if, if you know, the circumstances aren't ideal for her to always meet your need. But generally speaking, um, ladies, it's good to make sure that you recognize this as a need and not a want. And it is beneficial for you guys to constantly strengthen your covenant um, with sex. Um, mm -hmm. Because that's something that sex does for both of you guys. Yeah, it's a it's a protection um, against the enemy's um, wiles and tactics. Because um, if you understand spiritual things, one, this is kind of going off a little bit, but in dreams, you know, the enemy comes to attack us through dreams. According to Ma Matthew thirteen twenty five, I believe it says, "While men slept, his enemy come and sow tears among his wheat and go his way." So, in our dreams, usually um, the enemy comes to forge covenants to have open yes. doors to come to break our marriage or destroy and wreak havoc in our lives. And so, while our dreams is something may be, may seem innocent, this is one way how the spirit realm, which is God or the um, the kingdom of darkness, darkness. tried to influ influence how we um, operate here on earth. And so the devil is constantly looking at ways as he started from the garden uh, of destroying our marriages, of ripping us apart because he hates what anything that God put in place the en enemy hates and he wants to destroy. And so the marriage is the first and most important thing that that um god uh created it's like the 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 marriage is actually the the at the forefront of the war so to say yeah. and so basically the enemy would do anything and this area of of sex for men is so critical in that god when adam i always like to think about it this way i had to get a way of understanding because i really didn't understand why joel why was this such a big need and of course it wasn't that a big need for me but um you know but i'm like why is it such a great need right and so i had to get some understanding so that i'm able to do what god wanted me to do so i was thinking about in the in the, in the scripture i'm like why remember adam was busy naming the animals and doing work right he had pur his purpose his work busy busy doing his work and god adam didn't go looking for a wife he didn't say you know what i need a suitor just like the animals that i'm naming no he basically god had to say it's not good for this man to be alone because right. he knew he would be lost in his work and his purpose so god was the one who stopped him and put him to sleep and 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 gave him a wife a helper that is suitable for him right and that's when he you know he didn't know he had that need anyway i'm liking it to today men could be so focused in their work focus on different things and and i i find that men that work the hardest their sex drive is much more higher so they have a need for it so it's a tie so i think it's like um recreation it could be um so a kind of a re rejuvenating a strengthening um a strengthening that happens when when they do get to ha um, have sex uh pr proper rest happens you know clearing of the mind all of this was necessary to help adam to become better at what he was doing and god saw that it was good and god put it in place so i always try to look at it that way that that sex is something that helped for the health of my husband you know for his mental health his emotional health and also for him to be healthy enough spiritually to stand against the wiles of the devil in that you know he's not tempted outside right because men are visual creatures and god made them visual because i think that again they can get so um focused on other thing he, he made the woman um attractive enough that he will notice it notice the his wife mm -hmm. and that's why it's so important for us to live a righteous life and that's why jesus even gave the instructions that if you so look at a woman um in a in a lustful way you've committed adultery but this because they know that um when men are visual so women we have to make sure that we are being the one that he's attracted to in that we're meeting all of his needs right is number one the need for respect and honor um then number two need for sex because women the, the woman on the outside of the 
that the 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 marriage. the marriage she the devil is going to give her insight on how what she need to do to be able to lower your husband so she might not even know the needs of a man but because she's on assignment by the devil the devil knows the need right so the devil is going to equip her with the proper information so when the man is there she's going to tell him like you know you know, you're such a good man. You're a good provider. She's going to start speaking to him, affirming him again and speaking to, to his aunt, honor, to honoring honor and him. Respect. Right. So the woman is going to start honoring and respect, respect him while at home, you know, because he's living and they have, uh, he might have family, children, responsibility. And his wife could be overwhelmed if she's not, if she's not doing what she needs to do in a home as in, in respect to um, honoring him and then providing sex. If she's withholding it that's two strikes against her that two and two pluses for the for the one lower trying to lure him out of the house mm, you understand so we want to make sure that we are wise within our our homes so it's not just that you're smart and you have all these degrees um god is looking at um looking at to see if we understand the have wisdom that is right and i was looking at the bible and the, the definition of wisdom is war um what do you call it? Yeah, uh, yeah, war, um, skill, skill, skilled, at war. War, skilled at war, right? And this tells speaks to the fact that you know our marriage is uh is we are in a war against the enemy, right? And we're we're on the um in the kingdom of heaven um, side, right? In a war. That's why hence the Bible talk about putting on the full armor of God and so on and so forth. But in the marriage, we are the forefront. So basically. We want to make sure that we're using wisdom. We have to be skilled at the war of marriage. Right. And so basically, um, you know, we need to know that honoring our husband is, num is, is, is something that we must do. Number two, sex is a need that he, that, that he needs to have get fulfilled. Yeah. So that takes me into the second need. As sex is to a man, conversation and communication is to a woman. So a lot of the times men have a difficulty meeting these needs, but I don't, well, the great thing about us is that Joel like to talk, so that's good. <laughs> but he, he, he likes to talk and conversate, but that just him talking is not, is not communication. It's not conversation. It's not, it's not communication. The woman wants to be heard, right? It's very important for um, your wife is, should be allowed to speak. And a, a lot of times men, because they're logical, they're in the business of fixing things. They want to, if she's telling me this is for me to fix it. And it's like, woman, slow down. You're telling me too much. I can't fix all of that. So he's overwhelmed. So men get this. When your wife is talking to you and conversating is her number two need. She needs conversation. She needs to speak. She needs to get out what it is inside of her. I always think that what maybe um, Eve was trying to talk to Adam, but he was busy doing his work that he didn't talk to her. So she talked to the, the serpent and look what happened. So guys, you want to protect your home. You want to make sure that you're meeting that need for conversation and communication. Again, it goes back to her number one need of security. And so, you know, um, conversation and communication is very important, not just, um, you know, you have something to say to her and you, you guys talk about what you want to talk about. Let it be about a biz, your business, about um, the, the cares of the, the house, the responsibilities with the children, medical schools, um, school situation or job situ issues. She wants to know that you're interested in the things of her. Like, how are you? You want to be interested in her. How is she changing? Being concerned about her and I have her talk. If she's going to talk, to so listen. Um, uh, what was his name? Um, the president. He was an actor. Ronald oh, Reagan, Reagan was known to be one of the best conversationalists. Everyone would come compliment and how he was a great conversationalist. But and 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 the person that was doing a report on him talking about how him being this way was that he would always listen. He would ask the person one question, and the one question would be about them. And he would spend the rest of the time listening to that respond to that one question. And the people would leave saying he's such an he's so such a great um I love having conversations with him, but he didn't talk much. They were the one talking a lot and they felt so good because they were able to speak 
and share and they felt good that they were able that he, he he saw them and he heard them so a conversation great conversationalists are great listeners you usually are interested in the other person you ask them one question about themselves and then we be quiet and we listen and have them talk uh, or whatever they want to talk about the well, men god did you a favor when they did this it's great time for you to now listen right listen to what are some of the things that your wife might be needing help with, what she might be needing assistance with, um, some things about you, insights about the children, if the children need help in anything, what's, um, what, what's concerning her or who, how I can help her, or how great she really thinks you are. So it's just gathering information necessary for the success for the home. Because the wife, she's constantly getting information. She's constantly getting things inside of her, and she's a wealth of information. And she might be, and she's usually filled with a lot of discernment, um, have a lot of wisdom and and knowledge that could help in the process. So, when you ask her the question, be prepared to listen. I know that's tough. Just like for women, sometimes it's tough. You know, after a long day, taking care of the children, cooking. Um, you know, running a business, all that she has to do and still be ready and, and, and available to meet your number two need, which is sex. So as sex is important for a man, so is conversation for a woman. Wow. That's deep. <laughs> that's deep. All right. Well, number three, um, need for a man is friendship. And this is something that, um, is a need. And a lot of times this one is tricky because a lot of times the man don't even know that this is a need for him. Yeah. Right? Uh, most men don't realize that this is a need that he has. Uh, and this is why he gets upset <laughs> at his wife when he feels like he can't yet trust her mm -hmm. to open up with her. Um, it gets him frustrated um, when he has to go and talk with somebody else or his buddy or whatever. Because deep down in him, he has a desire to have um, his closest relationship be, or his most intimate relationship be with his wife, um, only to find out that, you know, um, if they're not in a good place or if she's not mature with his heart, right, going back to the number one need, if he feels like he's being disrespected and dishonored mm -hmm. a lot, then it says to him that I cannot have this number three need for friendship be built with her. Mm -hmm. And as much as this need is important for me, how can I have this be need be met by someone that I find is being dishonoring and disrespectful to me? So this adds to his frustration. Yeah. And this adds to his frustration because um, there we go. Number one need is not being met by her. And now number three is not being met by her. Let's give her some credit. Let's say she is good with him in the sex area. But if he's feeling dishonored and now he realizes that his need for friendship is not going to be met by her because I can't friend someone that is disrespecting me. I can't let my guards down with someone that I feel is dishonoring me. Now it adds frustration to his life. Um, because this is what he wants. And so most men retreat to their man cave. Most men retreat to their hobbies. Most men these days, younger men that are growing up and getting married, they still hold on to their video games and other things that um, they could use as their time of solace when they really should be confiding in you, um, their own wives, which, um, you know, I did a talk on on something called the first mention principle, meaning that when there are victories or disappointments in the relationship or in the in, in his life, who is the first person that he's gonna bring either his greatest disappointment to or the most exciting news to? And when when a man has a person that they bring their greatest disappointments to or their great victories to, what they're doing is they're building their strongest emotional bond or connection mm -hmm. with that person because mm -hmm. this is called the first mention law. And that law says whoever you come to first, 
with high emotional issues is the person that you're building your strongest emotional bond with. Mm -hmm. So for example, if I got fired from a job and it crushed me and I'm ready to make a phone call to somebody to tell them this devastating news mm -hmm. and that person answers the phone and I tell them I just got fired from the job and I cry and I do all of this stuff with them. What just happened because they were the very first person that I brought that news to with the strongest emotions that I had is that there is a connection emotionally that was built with them. Mm -hmm. If that person was not my wife, right? Guess what my wife got robbed of? She got robbed of an opportunity to build a strong emotional bond in one of the most devastating times of my life. Mm -hmm. This is what, when, when we say his need is for friendship, this is what, this is what it does. Because those, the first person that you bring the strong emotions to in the area of negatives or positives, mm -hmm. you're given an opportunity to build an emotional bond. And that should always happen with your spouse, right? When you get a victory, man, listen, you got a promotion and it means that extra $15,000 a year come into the household and then you're ready to pick up the phone and call somebody. A husband should never have to pick up the phone and call his best friend or call his mother or call, you know, whoever. That first phone call about that victory should be coming to you, his wife, because that's an opportunity for a bond to be built. Mm -hmm. And so is the call about the negatives. It's an opportunity for intimacy to be built when we bring our, um, our losses or our victories to you first. Yeah. Amen. Well, the number, that's a, that's a powerful thing. I, I, I noticed that that was something that really brought us together. And, so, and a lot of times, if you have a friendship with your with your spouse, if you start off as best friends, that's one of the best blessing and best foundation in, in a lasting marriage. And so always fight to cherish that. Again, remember the mind frame is as you're learning uh, the need of your spouse, your, your, the goal in marriage is for you to meet that need. We spend all that time meeting the other person need and in doing so that person will meet our needs Amen. and when we give to them we will receive and so um number um so number three, three. Yeah, we're on the three for num non three the third need for every woman is every wife is um non-sexual touches yes man i said non-sexual touches that's right that's good um, most men don't understand that they don't, they think that all, all touch must lead to one thing, right? But women value non-sexual touches. The touch is very important for a woman. You can, a lot of women study shows that with babies, right? When they're young, the premature baby is important for them to touch the baby, the more touches and holding they do. In fact, they have programs where they have people go in and their goal is to help with the premature babies, especially the ones that are um, going to be given up for adoption or those who are probably in the foster system to hold those baby or or orphanages to hold them. And those baby that are held, they re respond best to the treatment. You know, they grow more healthier and, 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 and stronger, faster versus those who were not held. Um, there was also an orphanage in, in, I don't remember if it's India or Africa, where they had done, they got this, this report from that, that experience in the, in the, in the orphanage. A lot of the babies, they were, be, they were being born and they were being fed, but they were, di they, they were dying from um, whatever health issues and so on. But when they found out that um, there was a nurse, that she would go in and she would, or she would spend the time just holding the babies. And the babies, they thrived. They did not, they did not die. And they, they put on weight and they were getting healthier uh, with the food, same food that was given. And the conclusion was the importance of touch. And for women, we are more sens sen sensitive with, with touch. So we, we also find that if women are dealing with stresses or um, stress or anxiety, just the touches from her husband helps. In fact, the more touches a husband give her, the less chances of her to deal with these stresses and anxiety, believe it or not. And guys, the more non-sexual touches you give a woman, the chances for her to re for you to receive sex is very high with excitement and joy. You see, um, having sex starts for a woman 
from the beginning of the day. The deposits of love and affection that you show the woman the entire day or the entire week. Um, it adds to whenever sex, this time comes to sex, for it to be a great experience for both parties. A great orgasmic experience for both parties. But a lot of times um, you find in in um, in, mar in marriages that the, the man, you know, they're ready to go. They don't need much. But for women, we have, especially if they're taking care of children, if, if, if your wife and you have the same highly stressful job, if you're bu building a business, if you're doing, um, if she's out there working a lot, that that's a lot on her and in turn especially being an incubator she's incubating the stress she's been incubating the negativity she's incubating all the things out there right where you are logical you're just going straight forward um you know you're not taking in stuff and incubating so the best to help her to help her be prepared and ready for for sex or to be receptive to you a lot of touches you know when she's washing the dishes you come up behind her put your hands around her um and just hold her you know um you're sitting in the in in the chair and you're just watching tv together you have her um foot in your hands in your hands or you're holding her or whatever the case may be or you're just lying on her and you're, you're just rubbing her it's a lot it's very important holding hands as well i'm like why what happened to holding hands remember when back in the days the sig the the what signified that you were in love was you would hold hands right <laughs> so now these days it's like guys what's i don't see enough people holding hands you know um it's like holding hands is for the young just new new lovers uh, this should be a lot of husband and wife just holding hands hand in hand doing different things like joel and i when we go into walmart we would hold hands and be like yes yeah, the walmart love <laughs> <laughs> so we just have fun fun with it but just um just a lot of touches. I needed a lot of touch because I did not have that um, growing up. Again, my mom was a single mom and she was busy. Every time, I, when I was young, I was accustomed, she would always have, when we were back in the country that we are from, she would hold us, she would hug us, always kissing us and go to, when she go to work, when she come in, she always had us close to her. When we came to New York, um, to, the, to New York City, it was a busy life, very busy life. And as a single mom, it was very hard for her going to school and going to work. And so we didn't, I didn't have that a lot and I like I needed the touch right the hugs and so on so when I met Joel I gave a lot of that I was very touchy huggy to jo to Joel a lot and he just sucking he just suck it and you know like yes yes I'm like buddy you gotta you gotta share some of the love you gotta give some of the wealth right <laughs> but you know I'm giving it to you you know you know right here but he didn't get it you know but anyway he, he learned he learned now though right I hope so. I ho yeah. I mean, <laughs> anyway, but the non-sexual touch, I can't tell you guys, you are doing yourself a great this, this just, um, injustice um, to the quality of um, life that you can have if you, if you get good at this one non-sexual touch. Um, I know it's difficult for most of you. Um, it's like I'm speaking another language right now to most men, but it's very important. The more touches, the more non-sexual touches, the affection that you show her, it helps her, especially if she was always the tough one. Um, the toughest ones needed the most because my personality is I'm an um, interactive, directive personality. So it's kind of direct. more more direct, strong, um, interactive personality. Mm -hmm. So I'm extroverted and also I'm a task-oriented person. So I could tend to go in to the workaholic mode that I don't seem to slow down enough to receive. And that's kind of tough for Joel, having a personality that's more um, on the, the, the steady, uh, peaceful, phlegmatic personality. He's not, he doesn't... Um, not, not a, oh, a better word for confronting. You don't, you don't, you don't, a word for, con, um, you don't confront. You don't initiate. I don't know. Mm. know what is not, I, I'm trying to say that you're not, you're just, re, you just sit I'm back. I'm reserved. Reserved. So he's, unre, he's unreserved. The opposite, whatever the opposite of, of reserved is, if one could text it in there, he's not, he's very, he's not that. So he's very reserved. So he when i need the non the non sexual touch sometimes to get me to slow down or if he would just come and hold me or hug me and say 
Come, Sherilyn. Come, come. Take a little break. I would resist it. No, I have to do this. Got to be getting done. Right, so. You know, but if he could just, if he would push past, knowing the need for me to have that affection and say, come, take a break, hon. Come and give me a hug or whatever. It would, it would make me feel mm -hmm. a little bit more. It will decompress me and be receptive. It brings me back into that um, tender um the, for lack of that gentle, um, gentle way. But a lot of times in it, men just let their women just go do everything and they just watch it and stay over here. But she really needs you. And this is some, some way a lot of, a lot of us need rescuing, well, rescuing in. Yeah. Well, this is, this is an area also personality plays a, a role in this. Yeah. Um, like Sherilyn mentioned with her personality type, it's a personality type that is for lack of a better word, it's a little bit stubborn. And my personality type is a little bit more um, non-confrontational. So if you resist me, um, you're going to find it, I'm going to find it difficult to push past your stubborn wall to get you to do where, what you need to do, so to speak. So that first wall of resistance, um, I may not persist past it. So you got to be careful also, um, ladies and gents out there, about your personality types. If your personality type, know your personality type and know the weaknesses of it, and then do your best to compensate for the negative side of your personality type. That's something that I had to learn, right? The negative side of my personality type is that if I see confrontation, I'm going to run from it. Um, I don't, I don't go after confrontation, right? So, um, if I have to do something that requires me pushing hard to like fight you to do something, chances are I'm not going to succeed at it. If I don't have an understanding that this is what I'm working against and I have to be able to push through, right? So understand, um, who you guys both are. This is why these conversations are important. That's why I'm proud that so many of you are on here right now getting knowledge because once you know who you are and who your spouse is, then it gives you a better uh, chance, it puts you in a better position to, um, to fight for the relationship. Mm. Amen. Anything else? Um, the final one, the last um, need we could talk about. Absolutely. So for men, um, his number four need right is a need for domestic support and all this means is that he's interested in his wife being more domestically centered over all the other things that that's on her plate what do i mean it doesn't mean that she can't work a job or that she cannot be a businesswoman or she can't be someone that's in ministry that's doing external things from the house right all it means is however successful she is he wants to know that her heart is, is at home first, that her heart is domestically centered and, and th then th that there's no trade-offs being made, meaning she's a successful woman and so the house has to suffer because she's a boss lady out there, right? If she's a boss lady out there, he has no problem with that, but he just needs to know that her heart is domestically centered. Her heart is about the family. And for the most part, if, um, if things are struggling at home, that her heart is more centered on bringing that area of her life back in order more than it is out there getting, you know, up the corporate ladder or getting things done out in the world. So domestic support is, um, is tremendously important to him. And he just wants to know that she's interested in that aspect of life um, for him and for the family, um, because that also adds towards his honor and his and the, and, and the way he feels about himself when he knows that, you know, his helper is tuned into that aspect of life for him. Yeah, well. Um, I, I, I want to give, first of all, a lot of respect to all the, the women that are handling, holding it down at the house and also outside of the home, because it is a lot of work to do both. 
Um, it is not easy, um, especially when you're working a job and you're doing so much out of the home and having to take care of the stuff at the home because the home is a full-time job. You know, I've worked outside of the home. Um, we've owned um, businesses and also um, I've been a stay-at-home home mom. A lot of the times, um, leaving and going out to do business <laughs> was a break <laughs> a break from the house based on the, the all that has to do in the home so i hope that men really value those their wives that are doing that and also wives see it as a value and a great um blessing when you when you are your heart is turned towards the home because society is wanting us to believe um, that this is not a good thing and that's a uh, that's a pit, um, life from the pit of hell. One of the greatest example I could talk about. Everyone knows Michelle Obama, right? Michelle Obama, um, um, she uh, she represents this very well. She's a very successful um, woman in her own right. In fact, she was the one who was the mentor of Obama when they were in. Um, when they were working at their first law firm, she had to mentor him. And also, she also was very successful in any, everything she did. But when it came time, whenever he went to run for in, an office, they understood the goal that they both had. They, they they had their their goals that they knew what each other um the goals that each other has for themselves in terms of success and she recognized that her husband has a chance to make a difference in the world so what she did was she put everything on the back burner to and became domestically centered she took care of the children and she supported them as a wife she became the supporter so she was very domestically centered and she still is if you read her book and if you, you, you ever listen to her talk she's very domestically centered to her husband and her children hence the success of her husband and their family you guys are seeing the benefits of the benefits that they're reaping now that her children are grown she's they're raised because again it's only for a time that you're going to be in certain season nothing lasts forever however now she's um traveling the traveling around doing her passion helping young people educating them she's written books so on and so forth all i'm saying is in the time and the season that you're in when the both of you decided that you're gonna um raise a family you you work out together what does that look like and you mm -hmm. always have to remember the goal and so when when issues gonna come to try to throw you off balance you have to remember the goal but one of the main things is also women re re uh, remember that to be always domestically centered because we're called we're we cover the home in the ch in terms of the children the atmosphere in the home we are the therm thermostat of the home and not the thermometer you know we just don't go check you know that everything should be might not be going well in the home now we based on how we comport ourselves our thought process how we are we could change the tone of the home and bring back order bring back um peace bring back um serenity in the home if we're out of control in the home like you were not feeling well when mom's not doing well, oh, no, everyone is not doing well. When mom is good, you know, everyone is good. And a lot of times we have to carry the children of the home on our backs, just like Christ carries the church and, 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 and um, had to give himself for the church. We carry the, the responsibility. We shoulder all of that responsibility. And sometimes, you know, it feel like we're not being rewarded, but still at the same time, it's very important because we're doing it on, on, onto the Lord. And because it's in, within how he um, designed us to be able to care for children, care for the home, create and, um, and create an incubation um, atmosphere for success in that our husbands are flourishing and our children are successful, God rewards us in the end. Mm -hmm. And if you look at um, Michelle, for an example, you see how successful her life is. She's still getting to do, she has the rest of her life, whatever long that is, but she's getting to do exactly what her heart desired you know, um, and, and still have everything intact, which is great family and a wonderful relationship with our husband. Same thing with my husband. We had goals together. You know, um, I we both worked. Um, we worked in um, the financial district. Then we, we started a business together. And then um, based on when we started having children, we made a decision um, that I would, would I was going to be home. I wanted to be home to be, raise our children. I want them to have our values. I, we wanted them to have our values, you know, um, based on how I was actually uh, fearful of all the, the, the um 
abuse that happens to children at a young age in these in different places when we were in new york city you know i said you know what i don't want to subject our children to that at the price of money so that was a personal choice that we made um joel sacrificed and did what he had to do outside of the home and we made a lot of um sacrifice within the home uh to be able to make sure that the children were raised with our thought process um biblically and, the, and laying that foundation and their health and all of that properly so Joe's always happy to work and do all the sacrifice that he did out outdoor because um, door when he came in his joy was to see that his wife was at peace and that the children were happy mm -hmm. and so that gave him a lot of joy and um, he was able to work hard and do a lot of things um, for us and so as as domestic being domestic center don't make the enemy and the world trick you guess the world the world belongs to the enemy you know um when god said if you serve the world if your heart is towards the world it leads to death and destruction and the world is at enmity with him so anything the world is doing i automatically know that you know what i'm going to do the opposite of what the world do and the world is trying to tell women that you know what if you're domestically centered that you're being a doormat and that's something for the past and you're being a you're being you know it's a chauvinistic mindset and all that stuff but you have to know your family you know when you married your spouse what your goals were what your desires for your children what did you want to see and what values you want to install and instill in them right and not someone else value so it's all about what it is that you guys were looking um to accomplish the last but not least the last um the, the number four needs for for women now is a leadership a woman love leadership um, and leadership is simply influence sometimes I feel that when men I remember this time when Joel um, was trying to lead the house right he knew that you know I'm supposed to be the leader of the home he thought it was a, a mass, macho thing like you know um, he had to make all the decisions he had to handle everything you know he didn't have to he didn't want to bog me down with the stresses of finances. He didn't want me to worry about that. So he was handling everything by himself. Of course, we didn't understand the importance of working together and setting goals together in the beginning of our marriage. So he felt, based on tradition and culture and whatever, however he, he learned this, that as a man, leadership is that I have to take everything in my own hands and do it. And he didn't have to communicate it to me. He only communicated what he wanted to communicate to me. However, leadership is influence. It's basically him setting an example for me in the area of, uh, again, um, res respect. You know, him showing me respect is uh, even if I, if, you know, if I'm, I'm off color, colored, he would show me respect. He valued, always told me how he respect me, how I take care of the children. He respected me in business. He just showed me respect in a lot of areas and he always affirmed me in those areas, everything that I was good at. And so because of that, he was he was influencing me in that he was setting an example for me to edify him, too. So because he was that way towards me, I felt like, wow, I wasn't looking for it. But for him to take the time out to affirm all the qualities that I, and again, I didn't see it as a big deal, but he always tell me, thank you so much for all you do at home. I really think, you know, you take good care of our children and so on and so forth. Um, he just set an example of appreciation. And, um, and so I would be the same way. I, I received it and I would always, I changed my, my mindset on a lot of things based on how we operate. Another thing about Joel is that he is very patient with other people. Like he was patient with, he was patient with me too because he had to be patient with me, right? He was very patient to others and he always gave them the benefit of the doubt. And he would sit down and listen to somebody that's lying, right? And I would be standing there in the same conversation, knowing this person lying from left to right. And he would be give this person an audience. And I'm like, Joel, why are you wasting your time? So one of the things I realized is his compassion towards others, his patience. And, and after that, that person would then try to be different. They would try to change who they were because he took the time out to pay attention to them, even where, where, where they were. So he was always leading in different areas. So it also helped me to treat him that way because he was my, my, my most important relationship at the time. So I focused more on, you know what, 
Forget them people out there. I know my husband. He's the one that I'm, 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 I'm tied to for the rest of my life. So what I'm seeing him do as a leader, and he, le he led a lot of people. Um, he was in the business of helping people develop businesses, and he was in training and leading teams of people. And so the way I saw him lead, I kind of I started to take those principles and I applied it to the house, right? And so he taught me in that. So he led as he led in that area. Also, he was patient with me in a lot of things. Um, you know, uh, he was patient with me in a lot of things. And especially the way I spoke, because I came from a family that were, was sarcastic. Everything that we said was just, nothing was never ever serious. It was always a laugh. It was always a joke, always a sarcasm. And it's like, when, when are we gonna be serious? When are we communicating? When are we gonna have a conversation and connect? And so he would just be patient with me for a while, knowing that he was getting beat down um, in the area of um, respect and being dishonored. And he let me go with it. And then I'm like, no, all of a sudden you want to change? It was working fine. Yes, it was working fine for me. So I thought, um, but it was, it was harming him. So he led in those areas. Also, he led with setting goals for the family. So he would lead, he would say, you know what, Sherilyn, when we started business, he came with the idea, you know, um, and we set goals for our business here, we can do, you know, and he would ask my idea on something. He said, okay, yeah, you're going to take that and I'm going to do this. All right, we're going to set this up and we're going to do this. Um, we were always, he would always be communicating with me a lot um, in terms of what we're doing. Always have me in the loop about something. Um, any news, he would always have me in there. So he was always setting um, and leading in that sense that he was always influencing me by his his actions and behavior. So a lot of times, um, men, um, if you, whatever, whatever you're doing, your wife see you doing on a consistent basis, you're telling, uh, uh, telling, you're speaking to her louder than any word you could ever say. So what you do speak so loud, what you say, I can't hear. So if you're saying that she's your priority, but then you are doing other things outside of paying attention to her or valuing her or your speech is about her or she's included in everything physically, then, you know, when you're saying, man, I love you in her, it's, in her mind, it's not computing, it's not registering, right? And she wants to trust. She wants, she needs leadership. And um, she wants to follow, but if we, if you're not influencing her by her seeing a pattern, a consistent habit or behavior, behaving in a certain way, then she has no other way in, in but to incubate what is going into her, what she's experienced, what she's seeing, and what you're gonna get is a full bloom of what is incubated. So remember, if you give her. Um, if you give her um, uh, negativity or anything, she's going to give you hell, you know. So whatever it is that you're giving her, she's going to amplify and you're getting a greater portion. You're actually sowing a seed for a big harvest. So won't you want that harvest to be good? And um, leadership, like I said, is influencing what you're putting inside of her. She's going to be she's going to bring back to you. Yeah. So. Well, here's the thing about leadership, right? Everything rises and falls with it. Mm hmm. So the state of your um, home, the state of your relationship, yeah. um, the state of your children, everything about your situation that you love or you hate is a direct reflection on your leadership. Right. Everything rises and falls with leadership. And at the end of the day, um, where, um, where there's room for um, improvement, that's on the leader, and where the accolades are coming in that's because of the leader right yeah. um i used to work for ge financial and i remember um the ceo back in those days for all of ge was jack welch and when ge would acquire a new company which they did very often they had so many different businesses when they buy a new business um and the business was struggling what the first thing they did was they fired the leader right they fired the CEO because they recognize that if this company um, is failing and we have to rescue it and try to revamp it, the problem is the leader. So they never keep the leader, the current leader of that company. The first person to go is him 
because they recognize everything rises and falls with leadership. This company is struggling and we bought it at a fraction of its value because of this guy. Get rid of that guy. All right. And in marriage, because we can't just, and many of us do get rid of that guy, but because, um, because it's our role and our responsibility to lead, how we as, as men get rid of the old us is through knowledge, mm. right? Powerful. How you get rid of that old CEO that's been sinking the ship is by going to the word of God and getting knowledge because it's through knowledge that you're going to get delivered from that mm -hmm. current state that you guys are in. And so for your leadership, man, to go from where it is to the next level, um, it, co it completely depends on how you plug in to God's system and how you allow God to now mentor you and grow you so that you can now mentor your family and lead your family. So leadership is, is huge. Everything rises and falls with it. And um, at any given time, us as men, we could, decide to f we could decide to fire the old us by renewing of our, by the renewal of our mind, right? And so that's what I wanted to kind of leave us with on the topic of leadership. Um, if you guys um, sense tonight that, you know, Joel don't have the energy or the juice that he normally have, um, I'm literally tired. <laughs> so I'm just glad that we were able to come on here and get this topic done because I know how critical information is for us. When Sherilyn and I were struggling, it was knowledge, it was information that other people um, put out, whether it was on a YouTube channel or a book that we bought to read because we were struggling in an area. Mm -hmm. All of that information really blessed our marriage and um, we feel that it's important um, based on what we do to make sure that we're constantly putting information out. We hope that this has been a blessing to you. I know you want to go, but I still to have others. to give some information. So um, basically, I want to encourage everyone. Of course, the number one place you want to go to is the Word of God. But based on what we spoke about today, um, the Proverbs will give you a lot of insight. But I want to talk about uh, 1 Peter 3. If you read 1 Peter 3, it's going to give you a nice um, understanding for um, what is expected of both the husband and the wife for the, the, the family to be blessed. And when you go all the way down to verse 8, I believe it talks about um, called call to blessing. So it says, finally, all of you be of one mind. That speaks to unity, the unity of both um, husband and wife, knowing that we got into the business, the, to our, um, our marriage to, uh, to, to create synergies so that both would benefit in the marriage. And when we, and the way we do that is by meeting each other's other need, those needs that only you can fulfill for your spouse. They can't fulfill for themselves. So unity being on one core accord that the ma the, ma the marriage is number one, and we're going to work. We're going to be two servants serving one another to, to meet each other need. And then it says, having compassion for one another again we have to exercise grace and compassion in everything because we're we, we're not perfect you know um joel wasn't perfect and i wasn't perfect we came from not not knowing and a lot of us and we're still growing we're not no we don't know it all so we have to have some compassion to where the other person is coming from right both of us because the same thing we want for ourselves we want to be able to give to the other it says Love as brothers, be tender hearted and be courteous, not not returning evil for evil or reviling for reviling. And it's so often for us to hear this. You know, I heard um, I know those are my needs. My wife not meeting those needs or I'm meeting all my my um, wife needs, but she's not meeting my, my needs. Well, so what do I do then? This is where you get really good. Now that you know the needs, right? You are filling them. You continue to fill them because guess what? There's a blessing, like I mentioned, that's going to come. So don't give evil for evil. If they're doing, ev doing evil, leave them alone and you continue to serve. You continue to fill their need. You are doing this unto God. Remember, on Judgment Day, God is not going to ask your husband. Uh, you, your husband is not going to be responsible for your, your breaking of the law and he you're not going to be responsible for his. So you want to do everything as 
unto the Lord, because that's what it's all about. The marriage belongs to him. And it says, but on contrary blessing. So instead of, again, this confirms what I just said, which is we meet the need, right? In regards to if our needs are not being met, we continue to meet the needs. And that's one of the things that Joel and I had to um, have to do consistently, knowing that you were called to this. You hear that, guys? You were called to this, to meet the need of your spouse and your spouse to meet the need. And you can read it. It's in 1 Peter 3. Read the whole 1 Peter 3 that will talk about how you treat your husband, how the wife is to treat, um, how the husband is to treat the wife. And then it comes down to this part. And it says, knowing that you are called to this, that you may inherit a blessing. Now, guys, we've been we why why is why is some of our relationship breaking down while we're having um feeling that our needs not meet, being met, we feel empty, we feel like we're you know losing. Why? Because we didn't inherit that blessing. And there are some things that we need to do. We need to learn and know, like Joel mentioned, through knowledge shall it just be delivered. We get the knowledge of the need of our spouse and we go to work filling it. And we do it not checking for the other person like, oh, you ain't doing that tit for tat. No, we're going to do it as unto the Lord because there's a blessing that we will inherit. And so um, you go ahead and read that whole thing. There's also a book I want to re um, recommend as well that we, we've we um, gotten tremendous um, information, a lot of wisdom from, and that's Marriage on the Rock by Dr. Jimmy Evans. He's also a pastor. It's a powerful book, and it gives a lot of details and great insight on um, marriages, and it's going to help you tremendously. So I encourage you. That's a great resource for you and your family as you and your wife look to take your marriage to the next letter level you know because remember this is warfare and the marriage is at the head of the war we are leading the, the the um the the army um against the advance against the kingdom of hell in in terms of uh making a different headway in this world and so it's important for us to gain wisdom so we can skillfully fight and fighting, we need in, intel. We need um, we need information to be able to do that well. So I hope this was helpful to you guys today. Remember that her need is security, right? Security, conversation, non-sexual touch, and leadership. And his needs are honor and respect is number one. Sex, um, friendship, and domestic support. <laughs> Amen. Amen, guys. Take care. And um, Joel's going to pray us out. Heavenly Father, we just thank you for this opportunity for us to um, fellowship around your word and um, principles that govern yes. um, the success of our needs being met. And so, Father, I pray today that uh, a spirit of um, servitude, yes. a servant spirit would rest on every husband yes. and every wife. I pray, O oh Lord God, that uh, the spirit of selfishness would be broken now in the mighty and matchless name of thank Jesus. You, Lord. I thank you, Lord Jesus. God, that the old man, the old mindset and everything that is um, of that fallen mindset would come off of the couple's would come off of your uh, the marriages yes. that are under the sound of in my voice now in the Jesus. name of Jesus. Thank you, Father. And that we would become... Uh, servants in love yes. with one another, yes. making sure that we meet the needs of one another. I thank you, Lord God, that a spirit of collaboration oh, would, yes. would rest on that's every household God. and every marriage that's Mighty under the, the sound Jesus. of Mighty our voice Mighty right Mighty now Mighty. in the name of Jesus. You, and we give you glory, honor, and praise for this, Lord God, because we know, Father, that every healthy marriage is responsible for productive community oh, ultimately yes. the world can be changed by a healthy marriage and healthy marriages in every household and so we give you glory we give you honor and praise father for your wisdom and your insight and your understanding that would edify and transform each and every relationship that come across this knowledge and so father we give you glory and thank you for what you're doing now in the lives of your people yes. and what you're about to do to Thank transform you, them you, and their family. I pray, Lord God, that you would give them a good reward yes. for their obedience to these things, O oh Lord God, that they would experience 
a heaven on earth experience in their relationship yes, Father, and in their intimacy you, as you, they Jesus. follow these principles that you gave them. And so, Father, bless them, care for them, provide for them and their family. We pray the full armor of God over these households so yes. that they would be able to stand Indeed, against the wiles of the Indeed. enemy Indeed. in these Indeed. evil Indeed. days. Yes. We thank you, Father, that their children remain blessed. Yes. As a matter of fact, we declare that 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 though hand join in hand, the wicked shall not go unpunished, but the seed of the righteous shall be delivered. And so, Father, deliver their children out of the hands of the enemy. May your hedge of protection be around them and their household. And I thank you, Lord God, that you will supply all of their needs according to your riches and glory in Christ Jesus. We bless you, Lord, and we thank you for these things. In Jesus' mighty name. Amen. 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 Have a great Have beginning a great of night, the week. And a great week. Good night. Good night, Terrence. Good night, Melissa. Good night, Ezra. Thank you for joining us, guys. God